um, end of lunch session, um, I gave a rough introduction to the whole sort of design and degree idea. Um, it was just my, the background to it, it was uh, um, an idea that I came up with about two, three months ago, I suppose. Um, and so if I just introduce, my, my name's uh, Toby Parkins, I'm, uh, I run a company called Even Network, which is a web development agency that does anything difficult um, on the internet. So generally more challenging projects, um, but it will build simple websites, but it will build a website recently for a local jewellery company, which employs one and a half people. Um, we came in how much under budget, quite a bit under budget, which they like because they're a small business, but we also do um, things like um, John Lewis's partner benefit system. Um, and my other company is called Head Forwards, um, which is a, um, a software outsource company. Um, had the uh, good news announcement yesterday, um, well we managed to get Vince Cable to announce that um, we're expanding by another 20 people. Um, um, and that's building um, quite sophisticated, or very sophisticated cloud management systems and local hosting management systems for uh, one of the largest telecoms companies in the world, um, a company called NTT that some people have heard of. Um, the, and that's, that's really, again, quite a different company, um, quite exciting in many ways. Um, but I think one of the things that I find um, certainly between those companies, and then from talking to everyone else in the industry, from talking to people here, and this is something that I think a lot of people um, continually talk about, is actually the whole issue of skills and the relevancy of um, the relevancy of degrees and things, and the, how applicable is it? Um, are, are the current programmes to industry? And, there's, as far as economic development is concerned, and jobs, and um, I personally, I think, the future opportunity of this country, um, we have an opportunity to change this. Um, if we can actually produce lots more people with more skills, better skills, then we can actually attract far more work into this country, and all have lots more opportunities. Um, and the reason for this, I know everyone laughed, I laughed at, um, this morning, and I've not been dropping about Vince Cable, but um, uh, that's nothing compared to uh, in the past few months. I've also spoken to Eric Pickle, Secretary of State for um, something else, I can't remember, um, and uh, spoke to the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, and the Chancellor of the Exchequer, and. Um, <laughs> yeah, the first Prime Minister of Scotland, and the first Minister of Scotland, sorry, not Prime Minister, yeah, yeah. Um, and, Unless you know something we don't in two weeks' time. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be very apolitical now, I'm not going to say that what he says is a load of rubbish, or what he yes. says is really good. Um, on the issue of independence, um, I do have my personal views on that, um, but I think what I did end up having a... Um, uh, five-minute, ten-minute conversation with him about um, what they were hoping to achieve with um, independence and, um, and their IT industry. And particularly, my interest um, was somebody from Cornwall, which has, um, we, the reason I was, um, had a meeting with the Deputy Prime Minister was actually trying to get more devolution for Cornwall in terms of control over um, economic development act activities. And, and Alex Salmon said something really interesting. He said that they, they um, had, were approached by um, a Swiss bank um, who were looking to build, to locate a new software development resource, as in uh, several hundred people somewhere in the world. And they secured it in Scotland by contracting three of their universities with computer science departments to deliver 80 graduates per year per institution. And by making that commitment, they actually secured that in, in, inward investment, um, which otherwise would have ended up probably some other part of Europe. Um, there's a real opportunity for it, but what we need to do is do something very different, I think. Um, so came up with this idea of the designer's degree. Um, so thank you very much for everyone that has actually contributed to it so far on the board outside. Um, there's been all sorts of different ideas. There's, um, it started off going quite... Um, quite uh, soft skills, there are lots of soft skills. I think favourite, teaching people um, how to 
um, celebrate failure, and all sorts of things that have to happen in the real world, but you won't find on the examining board's kind of list of tick boxes that people must you know, achieve in order to, be, to get a degree. And then we've also had some harder skills, um, I think as Paul put it, um, and I'm not intending to review all of those things today um, because we've only got half an hour and it would, you know, we could probably have a two day conference just about all, 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 of, all of those skills individually. Um, but what I'd like to do today is just sort of set out what we do next. And what we do, when I say we, I mean we, everyone in this room or everybody that would like to be involved in this. Um, the, the fundamental vision at the beginning was, right, let's get a group of people from industry to actually look at the future and collectively a larger group of people are more likely to uh, identify um, potentially a wider range of skills or pieces of knowledge. Um, and therefore we're more likely to do a better job. But it is going to be a wee thing. So I said I wouldn't review... Um, the, I, I, I want, can you put your hands up though? I have found three. Can you put your hands up if you wrote this one? <laughs> <laughs> and this one? And this one? <laughs> right, um, yeah, sorry, I made those up actually. Um, thank God. Um, the, but what I thought we'd do today, very briefly, we've got about 20 minutes, five, say five minutes on each. Um, validation, I think we've got some ideas there. We need to sort of somehow get them together. But we, we need to validate that in some way. Um, we then need to work out how is the result going to be published? Are we going to put it in a book, bind it, and ship it around the world to book shops? Probably not. Um, and then application, how do you apply the result of that? And this could form um, sending it out to universities, allowing the universities to download it, um, engaging with the universities to discuss courses. Um, it could involve um, potentially identifying courses that are kind of in line with um, the, that collective view or accrediting universities. Um, I'm not sure about accreditation. Um, we could, fundamentally though, I think there is an opportunity to actually allow us to identify the courses that are really spot on as far as industry is concerned and therefore um, encourage more people, more students who are having to dip into their pockets £9,000 a year going up to 12000 um, to actually choose the courses which are more relevant, which of course means that the universities, who are now businesses of course, and have to compete in the marketplace to attract students, the courses that are more relevant, um, or we, we think are more relevant as, a, as a, a collective, will therefore should potentially, might hopefully will, attract more students and then we end up with better students going through those courses and more students with more employable skills coming out of it. So. That's a sort of very basic theory. Um, and then, uh, finally, um, who is in, which um, at the end of this session, it'd be really good if we could um, have a, a list of people who said, well, I'd like to form some sort of <coughs> online group to just take things forward. And that's all I've got to say. Um, has anybody got any views, ideas? Um, well, I have a question. Say on. I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Question. I have a question, which is, what is the well-defined success outcome? <coughs> uh, we, you know, when this is done, I'm, I'm trying to scope it. We will have achieved what? What, what is the goal? Anyone like to ask? Will it ever have a done state? I mean, surely the whole. I don't mean done in terms of we've designed a curriculum that stands like a, you know, I mean, what is the goal, you know, is it to um, have a university or a college in Cornwall own a degree or the first, you know, I, I don't actually know what is. What, what about <coughs> respecting this as what are, the, what are plausible metrics that we could track? Or even just to, you know, like a high level 
you know, are we trying to get more Cornish graduates qualified in computer science, or is it design a degree that becomes um, sort of the gold standard of achievement in computer science, or is it? There are all sorts of things. I'm not sure. I just haven't been close enough to it. No, no. I think there's a few goals. I mean, one of them is to make it possible to uh, employ from Cornwall, uh, which at the moment is virtually impossible. So uh, it's uh, you know, and having people uh, study in Cornwall I mean, at the moment there's uh, uh, very limited supply from within Cornwall. Uh, so I think there's. Uh, and then there's more, slightly more ambitious goals about you know colleges and universities locally producing oven-ready uh, uh, graduates. Um, I, mean, the, the, I think there is a big question about the geo. Mm. Is, I mean, it, is it geographically located or not? You didn't and mention Cornwall once. I've noticed that. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's because Sean and no, that's fine. It's just that Dave <laughs> works in Surrey. Yeah, sure. And no, I, it was, it, I found it interesting because it's a much more ambitious scope to say that let's fix the whole yeah, I was say, computer science so by in the I'm UK. Not sure, I'm not sure it is more ambitious. I think um, what you're really saying is um, you're getting um, people from um, industry to say what, is, what skills are important mm -hmm. for a computer science like um, curriculum. The, the, the fact that they, they might be from Cornish companies or um, London companies doesn't really make any difference. I think it gives, actually gives it more credibility if it isn't Cornish focused. Yeah, I think the, the output, the output is the same, but the way it's used would be different. Okay, so you're saying it's design a degree as well. We're, we're, what we're facing in Cornwall is essentially supply of zero. We've started to make and we're not having any problems. Yeah. But if you create a course that's really, really awesome, and you get Cornish graduates that are then employable within Cornwall or externally to Cornwall, you're going to get potential people wanting to come and join the university just to get that kind of qualification. Mm -hmm. And on top of which, you're then going to get a load of other universities say, hey, they're doing something really, really good. And it's great for industry because suddenly we've got people who can actually employ the skills we need. I mean, would, would, would you say, no, you can't do it because you're in London? As in, you know, a university in London can't do this because no, we don't like London or something. So I, I, I think for this session, Cornwall. I know we're in Cornwall, I know lots of people are interested in Cornwall, but I would say for this session, Cornwall should be irrelevant. Yes, yeah, so it's I mean, designer degree, is what it's I'm saying. Let's, let's talk about the problems <laughs> that we are getting people applying to us from universities that don't know what version control is when they've done a three year course in uh, game development or uh, you know, web design or whatever. whatever. I've, been writing, I've been writing applications in software, but for the Latin program, not one of them have ever used purpose. Industry standards source control. Yeah, what I would say is this is this is like an opportunity actually to, to as businesses and, and developers are we have to tell you know tell academia what you want because academia will tell you what it wants yes. quite easily. Uh, so so I don't this is this is going the other way, so it's flipping it, is to you tell us what you want. We will then try and design a program around that so that we're actually producing the people that you're saying you're not going to get. So then, I also, sorry, just yeah. picking on that, I also don't expect that I can tell academia, as in Oxford, Cambridge, and one or two other universities, what they should do in their degree. Why not? But, but I think there's an opportunity for a lot of other universities, which are training, teaching, whatever you call, the majority of our graduates, to give them something better for pre preparing for industry. Now, it's not it's yeah, yeah. not ignoring academia, but it's saying that we can do something better, and we can get learning values into into those students, which will last them through a, a career in. in so, career. so just just a. Yeah. Can I just uh, Ben and then Kate? Okay. So um, this is actually a problem that, that some of us in the London Java community have been working on for a while. Um, there's a there's a group called the Graduate Developer Community, which is which worth looking at. Um, and, and through that group, um, we've actually worked with a number of universities and we found that, broadly speaking, academics split into three categories. There are academics who are fundamentally only really interested in research and they tend to favour the students who are going to go on to an academic career in computer science and, and to be mm, not really involved, so let's say tepid about, about the requirements of industry. Secondly, there are a group of, of academics who are who, who, who want to do the right thing but don't really know what it is because their the experience of the industry is perhaps 20 years out of date. Um, and then there are the people that, that are actively engaging and actually trying to come and find us in industry. 
So, so there are definitely academics out there that, that want to do the right thing, but there is, I think, across all classes, a sort of vague sense that while feeding for industry is important, there are also, you know, that they, they don't want to become Microsoft certified providers. When you say academics, though, you're talking about individuals within institutions, yes, rather than actually yes. institutions, because you know, we've spoken to lots of individuals within institutions who are very enthusiastic about what we're talking about, but you know, if there's actually going to be you know, courses and significant numbers of students on these courses, then you're not being back in the institutions. Yeah, the institutions have different agendas themselves, and some are for it, some are not. One, one thing which also uh, um, that, that came out of, of um, I've heard this, this from three or four different points is that the, um, the, the, the pace of applications tends to lag behind the market. So even after the crash, they were still seeing, it was the first option crash in the 2008 crash, they were still seeing a rising curve of computer science applications, which then tailed off. So, so, so the, the, the other thing to understand is the dynamics of the, of the people that are actually entering the institutions. Because yeah, I was just going to say, it is back to the goal. If the goal is to drive a population of graduates or students, essentially, that more easily fulfill industry requirements, then why constrain yourself to a degree and why not look even at the primary schools? Why aren't children learning Ruby on Rails as a first language versus French? Not, no disrespect. Or it need not be a zero-sum game because being out of the country and coming back, I see that we actually add to the number of subjects children learn quite a bit. So uh, is know, it, why there? That, that's, that's happening. I'm doing, I've done uh, half okay. a dozen, maybe more, ten talks in the past 12 months in schools and from talking to teachers and seeing that there are kids, I mean, this year, um, eight-year-olds who are doing Scratch and then getting into Python. Yeah. So then should we be injecting into existing degrees or is there a need for a new degree? And so if it's sort of, you know, I'm just trying to figure out bounded problem statement again, sorry. Yeah, I'm not sure whether or not we're, we're actually defining what the degree is or actually providing, I think really we're providing some, you know, a list of content. We'll publish, okay. you know, a list of skills and pieces of knowledge that institutions, if they want to, if they want to get the benefit of this, will then use to then <coughs> fit around their flavour of a degree. I'll tell you what we're doing, um, we're defining a test. Yes. Well, we're testing the output of the, of the university and we, well, how they generate it, is that yeah. Did you have... Yeah, one thing I was going to... I'm one of the programme managers on foundation degree at Cornwall College and we are trying to put it in for our final year so it's a full degree. And one of the things that I've been picking up on is you're saying about the actual skills. Now, we can, within the classroom, teach a certain amount of skills but them actually putting it into practice what I feel might be beneficial if one of the units in that final year that students could come either in a block to the businesses or say one day a week so they're actually experiencing the things first hand and then that hopefully they would be able to as a time or not build on those skills. Can I just um, so that we can get through the, the kind of agenda um, have we got any other points on validation? How are we going to validate? So we've got a whole list of things there. Surely in the back. How is the validation? <laughs> is it validation or yeah. something else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then should. Um, if, if someone is going to ask me to invest 36 grand in something, like a degree as a student, I'd, I'd want to know that I was going to get value from that. I think one of my mind is that if I was a student, or essentially hopefully not in the future came for a, a child's education, who isn't a child anymore, or nothing towards it, that, that, that was going to add some value to that, that you're going to get some kind of return on 36 grand investment, that's quite a few cars or a quite big chunk of the house. So I think the employability and actually being able to be employed or not necessarily, not necessarily having the skills to be able to walk straight into the job and start work on day one, but have the skills to be able to get up to speed really, really quickly. Sorry. I think, yeah, okay, um, I think that's what I would have given it. Shirley and then Sevon, right. so validation. I, yeah, I'm from Plymouth Uni. Um, validation, our courses are validated by the British Computer Society. So anyone here who is a member of that society, that's where we get the focus from how we are to put things into our degree programmes. And I think it's really useful, actually, if as a collective. So I, I try to engage with lots of industry people. That's why I'm here. That's why I go out. But it's really helpful for when you all get together and you're giving me this list of things. I mean, what I saw on the board 
we put into our degree programmes, but sometimes when you get a student sat in front of you and you say, what about version control, everything we've taught them seems to drain. <laughs> so I think validation, BCS. Too indirect, sorry. Mm. Um, so, so why, why, why BCS though? I mean, is there not an argument that maybe that they failed and therefore they're not fit for purpose and uh, and they should be sidelined from this process rather than saying so you know, the membership card with them. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't you don't BCS fail? Yes. 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 Um, so so let's yes. so um, I think BCS is a useful vehicle. BCS doesn't do it on independently, they use the Sophia Plus framework. Sophia Plus has been developed not by the BCS but independently to validate things. It's much more general than what we're talking about. It doesn't give you power force skills, it doesn't ask for that. It talks about industry standard knowledge. It works at various levels from one through seven. It seems like you know it would be crazy for a small group of us to try and reinvent large wheel wheels like that. There's more to um, a computer science degree or software engineering degree than being able to walk into a job and start shining out code. So the Sophia Plus framework is very broad but not very detailed, but it seems to me like a reasonable thing to hang validation on. Uh, I'm wondering whether we I'm, I'm trying to work out what we're trying to achieve here because the, the BCS accreditation um, does achieve some things uh, and it doesn't, it, but it's not going to turn out or help to turn out industry-ready graduates. Uh, but I don't know of any degree in any domain that turns out industry-ready graduates. Uh, you know, you, a doctor after seven years still does, I don't know how many years of being a houseman and then a registrar <coughs> and then a senior registrar, architects, chartered surveyors, they all need more training when they get in. I think one of the problems we've got in the software industry is that we see developers as sort of commodities. They get churned out and then we can put them to work straight away. And uh, the apprenticeship programs that you have to go through when you get into a company as a software developer often get skimped on. I think, I think um, they're interesting analogies though, sort of architect, <laughs> doctors, things like that. And I think they, they, what is churned out is much closer to something that can uh, actually work than what's being churned out at the moment in terms of soft, software engineering. And, uh, yeah, well, I, 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 I think there's, there's some interesting models there about mm -hmm. how to make those. Uh, you know, actually to copy what's going on there in, 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 in those locations into sort of software engineering locations. You know, a, a sort of uh, so cha great, chance chip for chartered institute. Yeah. That's so actually what BCS yeah, does. Yeah. What so about eSkills UK? Has anyone heard of eSkills UK? Yeah. Government uh, Cabinet Office initiative to look for gaps in business markets, and they might be worth considering for validation as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is the last point of validation, and then I'd like to, because we've only got five to six minutes left, I'd like to quickly get an idea of um, publishing, then how, how could it actually be applied, and then who's it? Well, I, I think I'm largely going to agree that um, depending on which route you want to go, if it's a case of influencing existing um, computer science degrees, then it's a case of finding the most appropriate forum for doing that, I think. You know, if we were to produce a report and send it to all the universities, it just it wouldn't have any effect at all. So it's, it's finding the right route through the BCS one. Uh, if, on the other hand, the goal is to create something new and perhaps local, then yeah, that would be a different activity, and that would be something that could be done on a much more, more focused. And it wouldn't necessarily have to be a degree. It could be you know, a series of training courses or whatever. Right. Yeah, so I mean, that's possibly how we how we can actually apply the results to this. Has anybody got any very quick views on publishing in single words? PDF. One sentence. PDF. I mean, you know. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. Or how? What do you mean how broadly? Do you mean the output? The output. Just this process. Out, yeah. Is, just a PDF. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I would say a, a PDF sent to all of the, the academics that we know collectively between us that we know that would be interested in this. And, and yeah. Does that have to be a protector of those? Yeah. I mean, so sending it to people that 
No. It so might be worthwhile to. Um, sorry, yeah. I say it might be worthwhile to have something interactive. So, as you you do have your PDF, which is so this is what came out of it, but then perhaps um, a, another something online that's um, a little bit more people can add to that or comment on. Um, well, I mean, the other thing to do is to set, publish it each year. So this is the 2014 view, and then you come back in 2015 and say. Well, we kind of nearly got it right, but we missed this, we missed this, we missed this, and then you update it, and you can take that as a bit out, and you know, take out iOS development because iPhones are dead, or you know, whatever happens in the future will influence how that will need to change. So that sounds more like it's... Um, <coughs> yeah, can I suggest it. you Because we could have a, an agreed standard document with a full version, and a sub-version where other people that have uh, other stakeholders can put their input into it and then it can be ratified as a group. That way it's publicly available. If it is dynamic like HTML or however it's driven, because I imagine this document is going to be quite comprehensive and incredibly large. You know, a 400 page PDF is going to put people off if they can navigate straight to the Who's right? <laughs> I just think frankly it's going to put people off unless it's unless it's more than just a group of people coming together. I think it's got to be something that's aligned with, you know, it's got to come out through B-Skills or BCS or something like that. I, I, I don't think there's a lot of point in doing it just as a group of people. I think it has to have some some internal validation otherwise you know, wasting the time. I say I think whatever you publish is only as valuable as the number of people you can actually get to read it and go and see it. And may be worthwhile investing more in that sort of lobbying and speaking yeah. to the people involved and getting them on board with the concept rather than publishing something to say, come look. I mean, this, this, this is what I found quite um, interesting um, to talk to Vince Cable about this. He said, well, this sort of thing isn't really happening anywhere at the moment. So if you're going to be doing this, then it's, we are really interested. So if you perhaps get government supporting it, you then get some universities supporting it, and you get people from industry. Maybe you get individuals from industry as opposed to corporations from industry um, actually sort of supporting it. Maybe producing maybe producing a manifesto is another idea that came out earlier. A very base method to get universities involved is to rank them. So you can, if you come up with your criteria. You do a agile ranking of UK universities, you'll find them come running to you quite <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I think if you've got some weight behind you. Yeah, you still, to, yeah, you still need your authority to, yeah. to do it. But. Yeah, but I mean, this is where you say, well, this is a conference, and this is a conference of you. And yeah, you say, well, yeah, there's only a conference of 300 people, but yeah, but it's a large agile business conference. Or, you know, yeah, I mean, you have those sort of arguments, discussions, but I mean, and if you can get businesses to sign up to it. <coughs> okay, we are pretty much out of time now. So, but thank you very much, everyone, for your input so far. Um, I'm sure this is just the start of many conversations. And um, just the who's in, if you, if you want to be more involved in this, um, if you perhaps come up at the end. But can I very just quickly, just come up, can people suggest some hows? When I say hows, I'm thinking about... Um, Kind of what communication tools are we going to are we use GitHub? Are we going to use? Has anybody got any ideas of you know? Mailing list? Google Wave would have been good for this. LinkedIn group. Oh, just a wiki. Yeah, a wiki a would wiki. do a good job here, yeah. and then you can comment and like and that kind of stuff. Wiki mailing yeah. list. So wiki mailing list. Mm. So yeah, yeah mailman. Mailman. Sure. And wiki. Like we set up in about an hour. Do some sort of Google Hangout once it's just a bit more informed. <coughs> See if you're talking to you. The big task will be creating the mailing list of the people involved in the development of these. We've got a number of people out there adaptable and flexible that really want to watch it. Do you want to suggest that we get that? So I've got uh, Wiki, Trello, mailing list. Someone's just a LinkedIn group. LinkedIn group. Is that 
Okay, any any burning last comments? Just one it just occurred to me that with all your political connections. Um, no, but uh, seriously, that actually, if you look at the way the national curriculum changed about computer science, it was actually it probably came from, you know, it was um, I think the BCS were involved, uh, Eric Schmidt uh, sort of had a big effect, and then it, you know, and then Go took it, and everybody uh, else who think we did actually do that, um, and then it then it became international curriculum. So there might actually be, you know, if government thinks this is needs doing, it might actually be a route because they have the power to actually just do it. You will do it. Um, and politicians will listen to everything we say with extra vigour until whatever the 8th of March or May. Or it is. Um, I mean, in, in reality, politicians are more accessible over the next uh, um, eight months. So, so um, you know, they are more likely to turn up you know, and want to be part of the conversation and potentially you know, if we can get some output from this um, then they're more likely to want to go yes yes sort of and, you know, if they're all running around and say yes 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 you know um, then you know, if Nigel Farage is going this is what we need to be doing and all the others follow maybe it's the other way around <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know this is uh, then well, I think it's actually quite good to get policy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Generate lots of, lots of people in England. We don't need to have anybody imported. Um, but anyway, moving on back again. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Um, please come up at the end and uh, give me a card or write your name down um, and email address, and we'll get something moving and then see what happens.